Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Usually Alexander does these videos, but recently we've kind of had an avalanche of games and I've received some, he's received some, so I'm going to go ahead and try to unbox a couple of them to share them with you before we get ready to play them, read through the rules, and, and get ready to get them on the table. So today I'm going to take you through an unboxing of Undaunted North Africa. This is a game from Osprey Games designed by David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. The game is the second in a series. The first game was Undaunted Normandy that came out in 2019. This is a follow-up version, but it is not an expansion. It is a new standalone game. You can play Undaunted North Africa without knowing anything about Undaunted Normandy or ever having played it or even owning that game. This game has all the elements that you need to play your uh, play this game. There is no solo bot yet. I know they're working on that for future editions. Um, but you can learn this game, learn it in 20 to 30 minutes. It is scenario based, so you're going to play through a set of scenarios, 1 through 11, that are going to actually teach you the game. They're going to bring out different elements, add in different units, like vehicles, different leaders, different uh, fighting men that you're going to use uh, to then move across a modular board that's made up of offset tiles to take objectives, hold points, destroy the enemy, destroy vehicles, etc. There's different objectives. The game uses cards. It uses a deck of cards. It is a deck building game where you're trying to get your best units into your deck from a reserve and then you're going to play those units which represent individual soldiers on the battlefield you're going to play those, move them around that modular board. As they are killed or wounded, you're going to take their cards out of your deck, remove them from the game. You can also take certain actions to remove cards from your deck. But it's a deck building game. But it's a very well integrated war game as well. Very enjoyable. We had a great time with this. A game that kept our interest. We played it five or six times. And then I wrote a series of uh, posts on it and we did a review video. But a very well-made game, very well done, very well researched, and a very cool concept. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, the, the box lid off here. But this is a 3-inch box, but it's not your normal large 3-inch box like some of our GMT games come in. It's a smaller box. You can see my hand for comparison. It's kind of a uh, almost a travel size game, although it is bigger than some of the other travel size games that we have. But it's very well made, very sturdy, um, great art. The art is by Roland McDonald. And I had made a comment to David. I think the art really makes the game. It sets it apart from other war games that we've played. It's not necessarily a cartoonish style, but it, it is a very interesting style that I think evokes uh, what, what these soldiers went through. So very well done. I'm glad they picked Roland McDonald. I think he does a great job. And really, I think makes uh, makes this game. So when you open the box, I'll move that up so you can see it. First thing you see is the uh, here's the scenario book. Uh, once again, I mentioned that there are eleven scenarios. Uh, you can see as I kind of flip through that, these different scenarios have your setup. Uh, and here's kind of the starting cards that are going to be in your deck, and which are in your uh, reserve area. So you can kind of look at that. This one has every single, looks like every single unit in the game. Let's go back to number one. Sorry. Here's number one, the first scenario. You can see that some of these aren't represented in the deck. The staff sergeant, the sergeant, the anti-tank rifleman. And then here the uh, Italians don't have tank commander, tank driver, crewman, gunner, etc. So the game covers the long-range desert group which is British Special Service Special Forces in World War II in North Africa versus the Italians. Uh, so it's a very interesting game. The tiles are of, of the desert variety. If you remember Normandy, it was of the French countryside, bocage, streams, pastures, lots of uh, forest and farms. Here you're going to run into dunes, rocks, cliffs, abutments, scrub brush, airfields. You can see there's an airfield. Uh, there, right there, you can see. So very different terrain, but you'll notice they're offset tiles. So what I mean by offset tiles 
is you don't just stack these tiles up in a row, but they're offset. So you have two tiles and then one in this row and it kind of goes up like that. It makes for a very interesting path of continuity to get to certain objectives. You have to go through uh, certain tiles or even more tiles sometimes to get to where you want to go. So it's a very well made system. But you can see these scenarios. Once again, there are 11 of them and they will add in different elements as you go through it. Here's a scenario where you can see a tank has been added in uh, as well as a light truck. And uh, you know, they're very fun. You're gonna try to get objectives or kill the other uh, person's people, uh, on the soldiers on the battlefield. Very interesting game. Here's the rule book. The rule book is like 20, 21 or 22 pages long. Uh, looks like 23, but you can see not dense text, lots of examples, lots of great pictures. That's the saboteur there. Um, they go through the different types of actions to remind you what to do, how to do different things, claiming objectives, escaping, neutralizing enemies to win. Uh, also, a lot of historical notes as you go through the rule book here, David talks about how the names identifying the soldiers on the cards actually were drawn from the LRDG soldiers during World War II. So really great looking rule book, very easy to learn. I think what it's gonna take you is about 20 minutes to get through the rule book, give or take, and then you can play that first game in 30 to 45 minutes and really have a good understanding of how to play the game. So not overly complex, but it is a very, very interesting and cool game. There are three counter sheets the first counter sheet we're going to take a look at here are the LRDG forces. Uh, you can see the different units here. These are represented. These are circular uh, units that you're going to put on those tiles. They can be shot. Um, if you turn them over, there's like a, a, an injured side. You're going to have to flip those over by discarding a card to uh, get them back in the game and then they can move. The only thing I did notice as I was looking at this, I kind of unboxed it before I came over here. If you notice this tile, let me put it back in its sprue. His head is kind of cut off and I, I'm a little disappointed by that. Here, part of the sniper rifle is out. That's not that big of a deal, but that head is a big deal. Here you can see the engineer, it's, his head's kind of sticking out. The tanks and the vehicles are very centered. So are the symbols. These are control markers. Here's a look at those vehicles, a gun truck, patrol truck, and pilot truck. Uh, here are objective markers, and then these are tire tracks, but I don't remember how they are used. These are spotted markers. They're not spotted markers, searching markers. Ooh, there's kind of a weird optical illusion going on with that crosshatch there in yellow. Uh, but you're going to place those on tiles once you've identified those tiles, moved on there with your scouts, and that's going to make it so that your other units can move on to those tiles because they know they know what's there. So that's the LRDG, uh, once again, the Long Range Desert Group. Um, those are the quote-unquote good guys. And then here's the Italians, and you can see they have very similar units although they have a tank a scout car and a light truck you can see also in some of their units you know these great helmet uh things are cut off which is a little sad so i'm not sure maybe they could have shrunk the text a little bit and shrunk those pictures down i don't know that that's a game breaker but kind of a shame that that great art is going to be cut off they've got their control markers objective markers you turn them over you see very similar to the uh, to the LRDG, but those are the Italian troops. And then these markers, these are explosion or damage markers. And then these are different markers, like this is an airfield and a plane. These are objectives that you're gonna put on there or uh, fortifications. You got a bivouac here, you've got an oil, looks like oil drums at a dump. Uh, and then here you got a truck. So those are gonna be objectives that you're gonna add on to tiles. Um, so that you know to go get them based on certain scenarios. But really nice looking counters. There's about 40 or 50 counters total, so not an overwhelming amount. The game also comes with this very cool plastic molded insert. And I'm gonna show you really quickly. So for instance, these units, these circular units, you're gonna punch those out and just stack them here. And then these larger uh, vehicles, 
they have their own spot there. You're going to punch those out and then put those there as well. Here is where the modular tiles are held. Looks like there's about 20 or 25 of these tiles, but you can see they're, they're double-sided. So this one says 1A, and it's a certain type of, looks like a sand dune. And then you flip it over at 1B, and it's a rocky outcropping. No vehicles can enter into it. But you can see there's different types. This looks like an oasis. This is just some scrub brush, open area, more dunes, dunes, a little more of that scrub, different things on the back. So there's about, I say about 25 of those, three, six, seven. Yeah, there's a lot. And, and this looks like it's about the same amount as in Normandy, 22. You can see the very last tile is 22. So there are 22 separate tiles. They're each double-sided. So in essence, there's 44 different tiles. And those will all be used in the different scenarios to make each one slightly unique. Um, some of them will be reused, but uh, they're, they're done very well. Here are the vehicle cards. They're held together by a little plastic sheath. Um, real quick, I'll, I'll show you, but light truck, medium tank, scout car, those are the Italian vehicles. Then you have gun truck, patrol truck, and pilot truck for the LRDG. You can see these different numbers here, drive three, navigate three. That's the skill uh, value that's needed. I think it's a skill value. And it's just a different ability that you have to do. Um, to use those trucks, you know, drive it, navigate it, suppress, etc. You do those things, you roll dice and, and come up with results that allow you to use them. Here are the two decks. Let me go ahead and they're also sheathed. I will open up the Italian. Uh, but you can see these different units. So here's a platoon sergeant, a recon aircraft squad leader, anti-tank rifleman. The other thing I want to point out here, you'll notice the A. So these are squad A. So squad A has a certain amount of units that correspond to uh, different... Let me, let me make sure I'm not messing that up. Yeah, that's correspond to different, different tiles. And then you'll have uh, like squad... Well, maybe it's a little different in this one. I'm messing it up. Don't get mad at me. Yeah, A's and B's, what, what happened? They're not on the backs. Maybe they're only A's, but in the other game, it was like you had A, B, C, and D, but it looks like these you don't. You also have these Fog of War cards. These are kind of deck fillers. Each, each scenario will have you start with two or three of these. When you pull these, you, you can only use them. Uh, you can't use them. They, they aren't good for anything. You can use your scouts to get these out. I think it's called Recon. You can get those out and then draw a new card to replace it, but you don't want these in your deck. You can also, um, you can also use these, those, those Fog of War cards, the scouts can put them in your enemy's deck, their own Fog of War cards. So once again, the more of those that are in there, the harder it is uh, for them to, them to use. So anyway, here's a look at the LRDG troops. I'm not going to go ahead. Maybe I will. What? Well, who cares? I'll pull the, the sleeve off. You can see, and then the top, the numbers here are initiative numbers. So at the beginning of each round, you're going to fight for initiative to see who goes first. Sometimes it really doesn't matter who goes first. Sometimes it really matters. So you're going to, let's for instance say, you have the right cards in your hand to move one of your units one or two tiles and take control of an, of an objective to win the game. You're going to want to go ahead and play something like a nine as your initiative. Even though this is a very powerful card, you're going to play a nine to win initiative and then play your other cards to go ahead and win the game. So that's why initiative is important. But all these units have different, uh, and you can see they're great. The art's just fantastic. They coincide with those round uh, markers that we saw at the beginning. Um, so anyway, those are the cards, the unit cards. I'll go ahead and put those back in. And then you got a bunch of dice. You have four 10-sided dice. The game uses 10-sided dice. And sometimes it can be very hard to hit depending on what your target is based on their cover, their armor, because you add those two things together. 
and then you have to roll above that. And sometimes that cover can be a five or a six. So all of a sudden you can only hit on a seven, eight, nine, or 10. So it's a lot harder to hit. Um, but a very well done game. I, I think production wise, these games are fantastic. And if you know anything about Osprey games, they've really made some very cool produced games in the last uh, eight to 10 years. We've played quite a few of them and really enjoyed them. But that's a look at Undaunted North, Af North Africa. We love this game. I can't wait to get it to the table so that we can show it to you. It's, it's just so much fun. If you want to check out on the Undaunted system, on our blog we have, uh, I think I wrote four or five action point posts that talked about the different elements like the characters, the abilities, the map tiles, uh, some strategy, etc., the way the cards work. So if you want to learn about the game, go ahead and read those at theplayersaid.com. Uh, give us about a month. We'll probably play through this three, four, maybe five times, and then do a video, and, and I'll do some more written content. So thanks to Osprey for providing this game to us as a review copy. Uh, we do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, great, great game. Looking forward to playing this, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Grant for The Player's Aid.